in equations um, are basically equations, but they give us more than one solution. So we're not going to find that x is equal to exactly 1.35. We might find something that x might have more than one solution to. An example would be like, okay, x is going to be less than 2. Um, and the word in equation, you might think about that coming from in meaning it's not equal, maybe. So you can think about incomplete as a word that you might be familiar with, and that complete, obviously having things done, and incomplete means it's just not complete yet. So an in equation means it's not really an equation. There's not just one thing that it will equal to. And so what we end up using are inequalities. And you might have to remind yourself of these. I know students love to pretend they don't know what they are every time they see them. So remind yourself, when you see an inequality, something like a less than or a greater than, um, the small end always points to the small number. And the big end always points to the big number. And you've got things like crocodiles you can think of. You can also think about that being a pointy elbow on the small end, and you always elbow the little scrawny person if you're a bully. So the small end always points to the smaller thing. And other things to keep in mind for, we've got our less than, but then we also have then a less than or equal to. And that's just when you see that line drawn underneath, that means it has to be less than and it can be also equal to whatever you're comparing. And just as a something to be aware of, if you see an equation sign with a line through the middle, that means that it's just saying you, telling you that they're not equal. Um, and we're not necessarily going to use these inequalities to a great extent, but we are going to be seeing them and um, solving equations for them, even though you might not have to interpret it. But if we understand what we're talking about, it could help us in the long run. An example that we could look at here, just in terms of what I mean by there's more than one solution, is if I tell you that x is greater than or equal to negative 2, because the pointy end is pointing at the negative 2, I know that x is bigger than everything above negative 2, and it can be equal to it. So x could be negative 2, but it could also be negative 1, it could be negative uh, 1.5, it could be 0, it could be any of those things. So any of those x's that I put into that equation will work for me. I'll always get a situation that tells me that x is greater than negative 2. So for instance, if I took that 3 and plugged it in, 3, is that greater than or equal to negative 2? Yes, it is. And that's what we're saying. It's that any of those numbers that I've selected and given to you as an answer will work in this case. So let's actually just do some solving of this. All the same rules apply for us, except for one tiny one that I'll cover as we get into it, that we would use when we're just solving equations normally. So if you wanted to, if it's difficult to see that little less than sign and it freaks you out, you can pretend that it's an equal sign for a little while. But it is going to matter that it is an inequality, so I wouldn't erase it or forget about it forever. But at the start, you can treat it just like an equal sign. So solving this equation, 2x plus 3 is less than sorry, 2x minus 3 is less than 5. So just thinking about trying to solve, thinking as if this was the equal sign, I want both, all the numbers on one side, the x's on the other, etc. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides of my equations. I'll get 2x is less than 8. And then that's 2 times x, so I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, x is less than 4. And you're done. So that is your answer. So kind of when we're solving equations, you might have said something like x is equal to 4. Here we're saying that, well, x can be anything less than 4. It could be 3, 2, 1, negative 500. That'll work. It doesn't really matter, as long as it's less than 4. And that's what I mean by more than one solution. So let's take a look at another example. Um, here I see that I've got x's on both sides of this inequality. And same idea again, I want to try to get this x by itself on one side of the inequality and the numbers by themselves on the other side. So I might go ahead and think that's a smaller x, I'll take it over towards the 7. So I'm going to go minus 4x on this side and minus 4x on the other side. That gets me to 3x. And I'll take the 5 by adding 5 to the side and adding 5 to the other side. And that's going to get me to 6. And last step here, 3 times x if I divide by 3 and divide by 3, 6 divided by 3 is just 2 less than x, and that works for us. Next problem. 
Uh, here I see some fractions, so I might use my um, ability to get rid of that denominator down there. So if I times every single thing by 5, times by 5, every single term on both sides, times by 5 divided by 5 simplify to 1, those cancel, you're left with 2x minus 5 and 3 is 15, greater than or equal to 7 times 5 is 35. Okay. Combining the like terms here, I've got 2x minus 15x. That gets me to negative 13x is less than, sorry, is greater than or equal to 35. And I need to get x by itself still, so that's negative 13 times x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by negative 13. And divide by negative 13. So those cancel. I'm going to get x, and I'm going to have 35 over negative 13. And I said there's one situation where something different happens. This is that situation. I need to change the direction of my inequality. Flip it. And the reason I need to do that is because any time you times or divide only, we don't worry about adding and subtracting, but times or divide by negative, you must flip the direction of the inequality. Oops. And we have to do that to make this expression actually work for us, to make this equation work out. So any time again that you divide or times by a negative as you're getting through to your answer for x, you need to change the direction of your inequality. So here it was pointing to the right, now it is pointing to the left, and that would be my final answer there. Um, if we take a look at this example that I did as the second one here, let's go ahead and solve for that the other way, just so we can see how this works out. x plus 1, 7x minus 5, and what I mean by other way is I'm just going to solve it in a different order. So instead of taking the plus, by minusing 4 in each step, I'm going to think about minusing the 7x. So let's take the 7x to the other side. Here I'm going to take away the 1, and take away the 1 on both sides. So I get negative 3x is less than or equal to negative 6. So technically I haven't done anything illegal. These expressions probably look a little bit different at this point to you, but um, I haven't. they basically mean the same thing to us. So as I go one step further, that's a negative 3 times x. I'm going to divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3. And here I've got x. Negative divided by negative is a positive, and I get a 2. Now because I divided by a negative, I need to swap that inequality sign. But before I swap it, I just want you to take a look here between these two. When I solved it out the other direction, and I didn't actually end up with a negative, because I put the bigger x's, I moved the x to the bigger side, so it was a positive 3x. I ended up with an answer that had the little thing pointing at the 2, because x is bigger than 2. But in this side, on the right-hand side here that I've tried in red, I took the x's to the left-hand side and it ended up being a negative 3. And at the moment, my answer tries to tell me that x is less than 2. But you'll see those are exactly the opposite things. The red one says x is less than 2, and the blue one says x is bigger than 2. And what's happened here is that I have not yet swapped that. So the reason this works out is when I divide by a negative, it actually changes the orientation and the direction that that sign points is really important. So if you divide by negative or times by negative, you need to change that direction. And now you'll notice these kind of say two different things in a way. I could read this from left to right saying 2 is less than x, and then I could also read this one as x is greater than 2, but they mean the same thing. Here you can see the big end is pointing towards the x, and on this one as well the big end is still pointing towards the x. So in both cases we're trying to say x has to be bigger than 2. And so that's another example of flipping when you divide or times by a negative. And again, depending on how you solve the problem, you may not have to flip it, but both of these are exactly the same thing and they are both correct. So keep that in mind. Any time that you divide or times by a negative, um, you need to flip the direction of that inequality. And if you don't, you can hold yourself back from getting a merit or an excellence on the problem as well because they're looking for that kind of understanding that you're aware of the fact that that direction matters, and depending on which way you solve the equation, you might have to flip that inequality sign. So, be really careful of that.